Sam, and and I'm the president of Chess Club. Um, some things I enjoy doing are shadow boxing and playing chess, as you can probably guess. And, and something I dislike doing, I would say, would be studying from home because I tend to procrastinate quite a lot at at times. Say. So, yeah. I think it's uh, Lu Luciana Caselli. All right, uh, Aman, Aman. Dr. Tracy. Good morning. Good morning. I'm the advisor of the business club, and I'm sorry, Josue, what were the questions that were asked? A question is also uh, introduce yourself and uh, what is one thing that you like to do at your home and also one thing that you just like to, uh, doing at your home? Huh, I like to do everything at home. <laughs> I dislike cleaning my home. That's why I don't. I hire someone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Frank. <clears throat> Hello everyone, sorry I'm late. I uh, just had some um, news that I'm gonna be a father again. Um, so that's uh, some something about me. Um, I'm the, currently the student trustee of Las Positas for this academic year and I'm a part of a lot of clubs. Um, something that I like to do is organize and clean and uh, something that I dislike is uh, uh, sweeping. <laughs> Jonah Moises. Hello, I'm Jonah. Um, I'm one of the event coordinator from Fuente. And one thing I like to do is painting. And one thing I dislike is reading. OK. We're going to go with Adria. I'm sorry, I'm working behind the scenes. Someone's asking to be invited into the meeting. So <laughs> um, I, uh, chores are a love-hate relationship. You know, work is work, but the result when you get done and you, you take pleasure in what you've done is always an, a nice thing. So um, it, like I said, it's a mixed, mixed like and dislike for household and garden chores. Uh, did I miss, um, I'm, I'm sure I, I miss a couple people. Um, anyone want to go next? Because I lost track of who is next. Okay, well, if I did, um, if you want to chat and also um, introduce yourself and also make sure you include your, um, your, um, your, duty or your responsibility that you have with the club and what club you represent. Uh, I'm going to now start uh, sharing um, uh, my screen with you all with the, the presentation. All right, so <clears throat> if you can at least um, take some time to, to also either, if you have any questions, we're going to be answering any questions at the end. Um, at the end, we're also going to have administrator service, one of the staff that's going to join us um, and um, just uh, ask any questions, scenarios that you have or any doubts that you have, please do so. This is going to be a great opportunity for um, uh, all of you to participate. By far, this is a great turnout that we're having. I'm so thankful for all of you um, who are calling in, uh, this makes our job much easier. Um, and I know that um, some club uh, officers will not be able to attend on this meeting, but part of the kind of the manual, I do, um, uh, I hope that I can meet with the officers that have not participated. So this way, all communication is in place. The reason why we ask that all officers participate, and also including the advisor, is that sometimes when we uh, say, for example, share something or we say something, we say it only a small fraction. And by the time it goes to the right person, sometimes we are either skipping apart. So then we can, we're going to have some information of where we have the virtual club day. And sometimes we don't even share the date or share the times, for example. So those are just uh, come, uh, some examples that 
of the reason why um, it's important for everyone that is um, understood in life uh, to participate in this club orientation. So my name is um, Josue Hernandez. I'm the program coordinator uh, for Student Life and Leadership. We also have, uh, if you mind uh, introducing yourself, Adria. Hello, I'm Adria Anderson Kelly. I'm the administrative assistant for Student Life. Um, and please note that even though we're physically not on campus, I am checking my phone messages and I'm on email a lot more than I should be even after hours. So please feel free to contact me if you have any questions or concerns. Yeah, thank you. So uh, these are our contact information. Um, if you wanna send us an email or if you wanna send us an email and also CC Adria, that would be the uh, best way because sometimes with all the emails that I sometimes get, um, um, sometimes I also for, uh, honestly do forget to reply. Um, but if you uh, do just reach out to us uh, and, and just know that we're, we're here for you. Um, those are our virtual office hours, but in any given time that you are interested in um, uh, me coming, uh, either do a presentation to your club meeting, that's also an opportunity, arrange that with me. I can also work um, after five, that's something that I can also arrange and to do. Uh, like for example, yesterday we were um, at our executive board meeting with student government and we ended around seven, I think it was probably 7.30. Um, so those are type of examples that you know know that we are accessible and uh, we are willing to meet with all of you. <clears throat> Who we serve, um, uh, student life has uh, been a common practice across um, institutions, uh, UCs, um, also private institutions that have uh, a department of student life and leadership. Uh, the goal is to provide an, um, an opportunity for clubs and also for, for the general public, for general students to participate, to gain access. Um, and yes, students go to class or either they go to class, go to work, and that that's kind of goes the routine. But part of being involved, it adds an opportunity of a sense of community. It's a sense of belonging. Uh, and this is the reason why um, we are an integral part in our, in our institution because, and the good thing we're being supportive, that's, um, I've been in this position for a year, um, and the changes and the routines and the things that we have done, I think they've been phenomenal. Like, for example, today speaks volume that we have 49 participants um, in today's presentation. Um, that's, that's something that is one of the successes. This is the reason why it's important that we have student life as a department um, that supports students, not just only student government, uh, not just only with interclub council, but also creates activities across campus. Um, and a little bit, I will ask um, Saba to uh, go over this slide. Um, this is the student government um, uh, executive board, and then she will take the lead on this. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. So as student government president, I over, um, and being part of student government, I oversee the executive board, and the executive board is made up of the interclub council, LPC Vice President, Director of Legislations, Director of Events, and Director of Communications. I also work with the student trustee, who's technically like not part of student government because he works directly with the Board of Trustees and um, represents different interests, but we still collaborate all the same. And um, as you can see, the ICC chair, Lord, he oversees all the clubs on campus, which is you all here today, and thank you for coming. And it's really a great thing we have going on. We meet for student government every other Thursday. Okay. Now I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and then uh, do you wish to share your screen now, Saba? Yes. Okay. So proceed. Okay. Can you all see my screen? Okay, so I'm going to be going over the executive board goals for the 2020 to 2021 year. Their number one goal is supporting students on an online platform. What that means is ever since we transitioned to online schooling in the spring, we've had to hold all our meetings virtually. We do this on Zoom, they are all open to the public and our information for the Zoom link and now password is posted on our website three days before the meeting to follow all um, Brown Board guidelines or Robert's rules. And we have, like I mentioned, student Senate meetings every other Thursdays and 
interclub council meetings every other Friday. Our next goal is participate in the shared governance and provide a voice for students. I don't know if you all know, but there's many committees on campus that are run by faculty and staff. So it is really important that there's a student voice in them. And that's where our senators and executive board members participate and attend those committees and report back to us what's going on. Next up is effective communication with faculty and staff, as well as serving as an outreach platform for students. We really want to keep students in the loop. We want them to know what's going on, feel connected. We want to connect them with resources and events going on campus um, or happening virtually. <laughs> so we will promote these events on our social media and make announcements at meetings. So if your clubs ever have an event going on, please let us know so we can help support you and advertise it. Next is support the ICC and clubs to maintain engagement and participation. We really want everyone, like I said, to be involved on campus. Stu clubs are usually the first place that students do go to learn what's happening and get engaged, meet other students. So we really appreciate all the work and all the amazing clubs we have on campus. So today we have club orientation where you're gonna learn about the guidelines and we scheduled our club fair for November 11th to 12th, which is where we can connect more students to the clubs and hopefully drive up participation, get more students on board in all your amazing clubs. Supporting all goals with an equity mindset. L Las Positas Student Government wants to remain an ally on campus. We wanna celebrate diversity in the community. We recognize that there are some amazing clubs with all different goals and promoting different things. We wanna prioritize the creation of an equitable and inclusive experience for all students. Successfully plan and promote the market every month. I know we say this all the time, but the market is truly a special event and it's the only event we can have in person and on campus. So this event happens the third Tuesday of every month this one month's market is October 20th. Please mark your calendars. It's important that student government advertises this on social media and we always try to recruit volunteers. So I strongly suggest get your clubs on board, find a month where you can all participate and come on down to the market to help volunteer and grab a bag of food while you're at it. Um, these are a summary of the goals I went over. And now I leave you with this number. 1,262 hours, 75,749 minutes. I'm not even going to read the seconds. Does anyone know what this number represents? Please chime in. It's the, it's the number of hours since school started. Yes, that is correct, Han. Um, every, um, school started on August 17th. So this is the amount of time that's passed. So I really ask you all, what have you done? Like, are you making the change you wanna see? Are you reaching out to students? Are you happy with what you have accomplished so far? And this is also a good time mark to see what also can be done. We have a couple of months till school, the semester ends, and we also have next year. So this is really just, wow. Um, what do you want to do? Thank you. So in, um, in, if you could chat um, your responses as um, what will you do as an officer? Or what would you do as a member? I think that's it's an important part that we can have a discussion. We won't read over it, but this is going to be an overview of, of what, what we do. So in the chat box, if you uh, have a little bit of time, um, please uh, just state what have you done or what will you do? Any other question, whichever you uh, uh, decide to do. But that would be just for one minute. Um, so type it in.
Great participation. We'll keep it for one more minute. All right, so as I continue, please continue to type um, your responses. The goal of this is that um, what we want is we'll, we're, we are going to send this uh, goal or your statements to everyone that has participated. This is going to give you an opportunity to actually see what others are doing or also see a goal that you felt or feel that you should use for yourself. Um, sometimes as a collective or as a community, we also need to have kind of like a dialogue amongst ourselves. This will be a great opportunity for all of you to read, uh, go over it, and uh, see if you could adapt any of the goals that um, your peers um, are stating. All right, so now we're gonna talk about a little bit of what is uh, Interclub Council, and I will have um, Lord um, take over this slide. Thank you so very much, Josue. Good morning, everybody. It's so nice to see all of your wonderful faces, despite the uh, current situation we're all facing right now. I am Lord, the ICC, your ICC chair for the fall 2020, 2021 semester. So essentially my role as your ICC is to network with all of the clubs, all of, all of you, all club advisors, club presidents to promote all recreational, educational, social events that you may have. It is in my best interest to promote all of events that you guys are coordinating so that we could provide a more hospital, hospitable atmosphere for all students, all community, community members for Las Vegas. Um, some goals that I have for myself is to continue to further, um, to further uh, increase student uh, participation for all uh, members, as well as incoming members for your clubs, as well as provide my continuous gratification and support in any way that I can to, um, to help promote any events or your clubs for more students as well as uh, community members to join. So that is uh, my role. So it's just very nice to see it, uh, see all of you and to be a part of uh, student government. Uh, Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. So if uh, any of you um, are also part of the Interclub Council, um, they have uh, positions available. Uh, uh, you are not required to become uh, or to be the ICC representative to be chosen. Um, so if you are interested in either uh, being uh, the secretary, um, there's, uh, so there's three positions, secretary, there's um, parliamentarian, and also the treasurer. Uh, for the Interclub Council, uh, and the ICC chair appoints that. So if you're interested, reach out to Lord, um, uh, and then see if, if that's uh, something of interest too, uh, so you can be more involved. Go I'll ahead, Lord. Oh, Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. So um, right now, uh, if you guys have any like further any concerns, any questions that you may have, you could uh, contact me through my zone mail. So I'm just going to provide that into the chat box. So anything that you'd like for me to advertise, anything that you would help, uh, need help with with your clubs, um, I'm always going to I'm always active. Um, so I'll do my best to get back to each and every one of you. So 
Uh, thank you. Okay, great. Thank you, Lord. So um, I'm going to fairly go quickly with this um, slide. So it's, um, it's instructions of uh, becoming a recognized club. Everything that uh, I'm saying is something that has been uh, embedded in our uh, student handbook. Um, uh, it's been the second year or second or third, second year that has been published. Um, so one is, you know, to have an, um, an advisor and an employee can be a faculty, could be a, um, a staff that works on campus. We have an amazing, we have amazing um, staff that support our students. Um, and advisors really don't get paid um, to do their, to, to become advisors. Uh, but that's really an amazing opportunity uh, for you to interact uh, more on a personal level with your advisor. Have at least minimum of six members and also a GPA of 2.0 uh, and also be enrolled in one class. Uh, you have to submit the form online, um, submit um, signatures uh, that is uh, required. Uh, you send uh, eligibility or you send uh, the email to Adra. Um, you also have to submit a, a copy of constitution. So for example, if you're a club and you haven't developed or haven't started a constitution, we also have um, a sample of constitution in our um, uh, Student Life website and Adria may be able to uh, post that in our chat so you can review it. Uh, and it's, it's pretty much the same template. All you have to do is just insert names and make sure that that gets approved by your, by your, um, your officers or in a, in a particular meeting that you have. Um, once everything gets approved by our office, it gets sent to the Interclub Council. The uh, Interclub Council formally uh, acknowledges um, clubs, and every every semester they receive uh, five hundred um, dollars uh, that gets deposited into their account. So in a year, you uh, each club gets a thousand. A thousand, um, and. Just know that every representative, you have to have a representation at every single meeting um, for the Interclub Council. If it doesn't, um, per the Interclub Council bylaws, um, you can also be deemed deactivated or um, and then be removed of all the funds that you have in your account, be deposited back into the uh, Interclub Council. So just be prepared. That's something that I've kind of quote the consequences that could happen if you don't have a representative in, um, in the Interclub Council uh, meetings. And that's um, uh, every, how often do you meet, Lord? So uh, each and every uh, Friday, so when we have our, uh, our student government meeting, there's the following day after, so uh, every other Fridays. And then to see um, the uh, schedule, we also have added that into our uh, student life um, office. and. Uh, website, sorry. If by any chance um, your ICC representative doesn't uh, have that, this is the reason why we have uh, put in a proxy. That means a person that has been verified by our office to represent the club. Uh, and a proxy can be an, uh, another member. A proxy can be either the president or the vice president to attend um, the changes. So, um, and all, all of you have already shared as to um, what our common goals, but this is really the purpose of student clubs. Student clubs have the opportunity to, um, to become or have a more of a common sense of social, recreational, or other interests. Um, so we also have a religious groups. So we also have ethnic groups too. Um, we also have the particular um, uh, clubs that um, share a particular interest. Um, for example, we have the chess club, for example. Um, so if you're interested, just review more of the student handbook. Um, that we are gonna be sharing, that it's, Adrian, if you can I mind sharing the student handbook. So now with COVID-19, a lot has changed under um, student club and, and the way that we have, uh, we handled um, um, our, our, our procedures. This, doesn't say that we don't support um, clubs. This is to say that because of COVID-19, there's beyond restrictions that we don't have any much of control over. Um, so one of, do you want to say something, Andrea? Sorry. No. Okay, sorry. I think I lost my screen. Okay, never mind, sorry. Okay, give me a second, okay. All right, so 
Um, I, and I, th I think I just I saw a, a section with FERPA. Um, FERPA is a uh, it's a federal requirement that we protect all the uh, uh, privacy of students. So, if, for example, if a student is not eligible to serve as an officer for uh, any given reason, um, we notify the advisor that they cannot serve and you have to have a special election. Um, unfortunately, we cannot disclose that information to the advisor. Now that um, if, you, if any member w wishes to speak to the advisor privately um, as to why they're not eligible, that's up for their discretion. Um, but we will inform them that they cannot serve as officer and then they have to submit a new, uh, and, uh, a new member to serve as that particular um, role that they have been appointed. So talking a little bit over uh, the COVID-19 restrictions, any ICC club meetings, activities, and events must be held virtually. So that means that we cannot um, go to someone's house, we cannot uh, meet, we cannot say order pizza and then eat at park, for example. Um, that's something that we will not be allowed um, a, um, in this um, academic year. That means that this fall and also spring, spring we will not be having no um, on-campus or even off-campus um, activities. Um, all field trips and fundraisers are, are actually prohibited as of now. Um, so that means that um, I know that there's a change, drastic change for some um, um, clubs that have fundraised in the past. Um, and until further notice with administrative services, uh, we are going to um, not allow any clubs to actually fundraise. I know that this will probably be news for some of you too, um, but we can also speak speak at the end and also uh, uh, hear your concerns regarding the statement too. Um, club funds, um, so giving you a little bit of overview of how club funds are used, but making sure that you understand the way that administrative services sees it. Is that any, any funds that gets deposited into our accounts are already are a discretion of the Las Positas, and it's also making sure that no, no funds get used um, uh, 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 otherwise. For example, providing gifts, uh, providing gift cards, um, or any monetary value uh, that we can, uh, we can do th that's uh, for nonprofit organizations. So making sure that everything that you, you, uh, you approve in your council or your, in your meeting, um, that it's by, by the guidelines that we have um, so making sure that it's, it's all up to date and making sure that you speak to us, seeing if you want to do a particular event, if you want to bring a particular speaker, for example, if you want to uh, buy a, uh, um, something for your club, for example, just make sure that we are well aware of, uh, of it before you make any purchases like that. Um, so... A lot of you, this is probably the first time that either you are developing agendas and minutes. This is the first time that you are um, uh, having an official meeting, you could say. Um, if you are creating an agenda, please post that on your, um, uh, amongst all your members. Agendas must have either the Zoom link, but also have the passcode. All the agendas must have passcodes. Um, we have had situations where, uh, quote unquote, they have the Zoom bombers, for example, uh, where people come in and then they can um, speak. For example, I had um, an incident in our student government um, that someone came in that it was from the general public. Everyone has every right to come to any meeting, but actually they started um, either they misbehave and we're actually doing something inappropriate. So we have to cancel our meeting and actually postpone and actually do a recess. So those are particular examples that just be prepared as advisors. My suggestion is that advisors develop the Zoom meetings. Um, this way the, the advisor has control over um, who gets in, um, uh, see if you can mute everyone if that's, if that's the case, uh, or if you have anyone from the public that comes in. So oh, pretty much, Every agenda and minutes um, are supposed to be public at the end of the day. So the requirements to submit agendas and minutes, uh, which include the club uh, club name. Sometimes when we receive uh, club um, club meet meetings, it doesn't state the name, or we don't see the date, um, or sometimes we put locations. But it, but for example, I, I saw uh, a minute that had a location, and the location said it was in a classroom. 
right away I saw that and I informed the advisor that um, it, just to verify that if they were meeting in classroom because that's prohibited, we can't meet in person. Uh, but they said, oh, it was through Zoom. So it was just, those are our minor edits that just be aware of it. Um, making sure that you have a list of the people that are in attendance or set of quorum, for example. Um, and then to set quorum or to set establishments of a vote, it pretty much is all the presiding officers um, that can initially make a vote. You can allow members to vote on items, but in reality, the ones that we really look at is the officers that are, are there. Uh, and if you're interested in putting unfinished business, new business, uh, motions or concerns, or even closing announcements for your, for your uh, minutes. This is an information that it's vital for you, not just only for our, our, our office when you submit any type of reimbursements, but this is a minutes that you, you should share to all of your uh, members that were not able to make it to the meeting. This is where we could uh, have more of a direct communication amongst members. Uh, and then they can feel included, say, oh, we, you know, I know, uh, we know you didn't attend our last meeting, but I wanted to share the minutes. Um, so they, you could actually engage because sometimes when people say, well, they're not including me or I didn't receive anything. I feel like I'm not part of the club anymore. I've, I've kind of heard comments in the past, uh, kind of like, um, but just making sure that everybody across, uh, across your membership receive uh, the agendas and uh, minutes in a timely manner. In our student government, we are, um, uh, the rule for us is that it has to be 72 hours before, before we publish. So that's called Brown Act. Uh, that's a rule that we do have to abide by. Clubs are not. Um, you could have, you could submit an agenda or you could publish an agenda um, and the rule doesn't um, 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 affect you at the end. Uh, give me a second. So, Okay, so I have a couple a couple responses. So I'm gonna ask Lord or Adra to um, grab grab those questions, and I will answer those at the end. Um, those are great questions, by the way. Um, um, this is um, this is great. All right. So useful um, words to use, minutes, tips. For example, is we agreed, noted, received, approved, resolved. Motions will be abstain, a or nay, um, and. Minutes should also uh, clearly indicate um, if you approve a particular fund, you say up to. So, the, um, for example, if you are approving a speaker, for example, if you're, if you're having a speaker for your club meetings, and you say the, um, the club approves up to $500. So that means that that's the cap. They, we can't go over uh, or say, for example, if the speaker says, well, uh, Yes, we agree 500, but after the, after the meeting or after the, the, their speaker says, well, now I, wanna, I want $1,000. In reality, the, the club only authorized $500 for that speaker, for example. That's just an example that we, uh, I'm providing you all. Um, so matching funds, as of now, per administrative services, no fundraisers are allowed until further notice. So that means that in this, I could, in this, uh, physical year, um, we will not be doing any particular matching funds if you decide to fundraise. Um, this changes a lot to all the clubs, um, and I know that um, uh, there's going to be um, a change for either the way that you have practiced in the past, um, and also for fundraising. So fundraising is um, it will it's prohibited as of now, um, and the reason why. Uh, for the discussion with administrative services is that um, we have to state what's the fundraising for. We have to separate the funds into two different accounts and that's something that administrative services cannot do. Um, so if you have, say for example, um, clubs have fundraiser for a particular nonprofit, for example, but how, do, how, do, how does the institution or an audit perspective, you could say, how do they know that that funds that you raise are directly going to that particular organization? Because once you kind of put the money in the same pot, it, everything mixes. And how can we separate uh, two entities? So fundraising and also um, 
um, the clubs that the funds that you already have for, for um, your clubs. So it becomes very confusing and an auditing, if we were to get audit, that's one of the errors that we can find um, that clubs are either not having a balance between what is be, uh, separating the funds separately. And that's something that is required that we have to follow. Um, but until further notice, that's something that I will continue to have with administrative services. If some of you are advisors that are in the room and then feel that this is a meeting that we have to have with administrative service, please, that's something that we can actually do and discuss. Um, uh, one of the administrative services um, uh, requests could be that we move this fundraiser idea to the Board of Trustees and the Board of Trustees approves it, um, that it's allowed to fundraise. But that's a lengthier way, that's a lengthy process, uh, but know that that could be a possibility. That was a recommendation that we received from administrative service. So until further notice. Um, reimbursements. Uh, each club is uh, eligible uh, to receive a particular reimbursement. Um, that means that a complete of uh, disbursement forms, uh, you have to submit original item as receipt. Uh, that's just no exception. Um, a lot of the errors that I've seen, and uh, for those that are treasurers right now, is that a lot of people go to sometimes stores that doesn't have a particular either store name or just an itemized uh, receipt, but doesn't have the, either the logo, doesn't have the direction, doesn't have the date that it was the items were purchased. So if an audit comes in and sees a receipt like that, it, it gets very questionable. So we always question if this receipt it was well used. And yes, for, for example, your integrity is to say you're always at right, that you did the right thing. But unfortunately in a receipt, it doesn't say otherwise. So I, I want you all to be clear in the way that you um, buy items, you purchase items, and make sure that those items are itemized. Also, when, it's, uh, when you purchase items, make sure that items are not for personal use. That's something that I've seen commonly across the board where, well, I'm gonna go order uh, particular items, for example, and I'm gonna get one, one coffee, for example. Even though student government allowed me to buy uh, bagels, for example, um, but I just wanted to buy one cup of coffee, that's, I'm already abusing that already. So making sure that the items that gets purchased gets purchased across, across all club members. It's not just for one person. So just because LPCSG provided me, um, say, go buy $500 worth of bagels, but I, I particularly want to get one cup of coffee, that's not, that's really not, and we're, we're, we are reviewing those particular type of um, receipts. So making sure that those items are not included on the receipts. Um, reimbursements, um, it's making sure that it's payable to um, a student or making sure it's also payable to advisors. Uh, if you if you have, make sure you include your W-2 uh, and also making sure that you don't pay out of pocket. Um, there's been a lot of situations where how do we know that that reimbursement was that took place? So for example, if you have a speaker and you want, have, you, have, you want him or her to come and speak, but you issue a check or you, issue, you send them a check or a cash to them, for example, how do we know if that money was ever sent? So let us issue reimbursements or let's, let, let us issue advances to any, anything like that too a disbursement that is uh, payable to a vendor. So for example, we have uh, vendors that we have already used in the past. For example, it's Island Advertising. That's one of the vendors that we use commonly. Um, so um, we already have either a vendor profile, we have the W number, and make sure that we have an invoice once the items get shipped to Las Positas. Items that you're asking to be delivered, all items, unfortunately, have to be sent to um, Las Positas. That's, there's no other rule, uh, uh, you know, and I understand with COVID-19 that we don't want either an advisor to go to, to the, the school, but that's really what it is right now. It currently, we're not, um, we're, we're prohibiting any items be sent to your, to your home um, because it, that's, that's direct funds. For example, if I want to order office supplies from, for Student Life, those items have to be sent to, to Las Positas, not to my office, because it may seem that, yes, I may use it for, for my work related, but I may use it for my personal use. So those are kind of, kind of common practices to use. 
Um, I'll give me a second. And disbursements requests must be approved by the advisor and also the club treasurer, um, if you have or club author, uh, authorized officer. So making sure if you have a president to sign it. So this way all of you are um, know how much money you have. Every, every month we receive our monthly statements so, and advisors also tend to receive also a copy of the, how much money they have in the account. Uh, if you ever are in need, like the treasurer, please speak to the advisor. And if the advisors can speak to us, arrange an um, arrange, uh, email to us, we can send um, the, um, the, how much money you have in the account. Uh, right now, it looks like every club has will continue to have even the five hundred dollars too uh, once it gets approved by the interclub council. Um, and aside of any funds that you have already uh, had in the past or previous years, uh, so purchases approved by the club, online purchases are allowed. Um, so anything that you are interested in buying or purchasing, for example, Amazon, uh, you are allowed to um, uh, purchase from Amazon. Uh, from Amazon Prime, uh, Las Positas does have an Amazon Prime account. If you are interested, um, use the disbursement request. It is, even though we have an Amazon Prime, that doesn't mean that once you submit your form, you'll get the items in two days. It's a process because that just that items that you are requesting for Amazon Prime, Prime has to be sent to us. We review it. You submit minutes that you the club has authorized it. Uh, if it doesn't, then we send it back. Uh, then if we do it, then it goes to administrative services and administrative services receives it and then probably takes a week to uh, order the items. So it's, a it's, a, it's still a lengthy process, um, but knowing that that's available for clubs. Um, recommendations for any office supplies that you're interested in purchasing um, using your office depot account that's something that uh, so please work with student life uh, with our office if you're interested in uh, requesting office supplies reimbursements reimbursements are um, it's uh, again it's an official and approved by the office and it's recognized by the interclub council um, right now i have seen clubs that have not submitted the forms or are missing signatures, but are still meeting. Um, uh, until you're becoming active and you are, are approved by our office and interclub council, that status becomes active. So in the meantime, this past month, for example, if, you, uh, if your club did not submit any of the forms and are still meeting uh, virtually and you approved any budget or any items and you submit a reimbursement or disbursement, that will not be allowed. You first have to be approved by our office and interclub council. So making sure that that's a um, opportunity. So for uh, treasurers, uh, if you are interested, that's also one of the, that one of the most uh, sometimes challenging factors of what we do uh, with finances is like, how do I manage a budget? I can also meet with uh, treasurers. Like, uh, that's also a, an additional training that I can also do is how, do, how you set a budget, um, how do you set up goals too? Um, and I know, for example, um, clubs uh, collect um, sometimes fees from members. That's also allowed. And I'll share how the process is. But that's something that I can assist with treasurer in developing a budget um, with an Excel. And I can, I can definitely train you and, and provide you different um, type of skills. Advances. Advances, that means that you are interested in having the advisor um, receive a cash advance. What it means it's a check. You could purchase items or you could purchase for a particular conference. Um, this, I, this physical year, all the conferences are gonna be virtual, for example, but some have also a fee. So if the advisor wishes to come and I say, well, there's a conference coming up, but I do want to pay the fee. I don't wanna pay out of pocket. I don't wanna use my credit card. I don't wanna use my check. Um, that's an allow. But that means that you do have 10 business days um, to purchase, to pay, and to receive an invoice so you could actually uh, get it cleared by administrative service. Um, same process with also advanced requests is that disbursement requests, club meetings that states up to how many, um, um, how, what is the amount that you wish to ask for advances. Um, and then you have to submit um, original item as received. 
The reconciliation of advances is, again, it goes with 10 business days. Once the check has been given to the advisor, the advisor has 10 business days. I would want to reiterate for those that are advisors, um, um, if you're ever interested in using advances, please do, but I want you to make sure that you submit everything within 10 business days because administrative services doesn't email you, it emails us saying what happened to the advance, why is that advance is not reconciliated, uh, why haven't we received a follow-up, for example. So making sure that, that we, you provide that, uh, that communication and we'll definitely assist with all of you. I have, we, uh, there's been advisors that have reached out to us say, I wanna do advanced, but is this allowed, not allowed? Um, so I, I also give idea, I definitely assist with providing ideas too. So club travel due to COVID-19, no travel will be allowed for 2020-21. Um, you could have a virtual uh, conference um, and that's allowed. And I'll explain that to the next slide. Or as of now, if you are planning a retreat, for example, if you are planning an activity, for example, and even though right now, um, a lot of uh, organizations or a lot of restaurants are actually opening up, um, still those are not allowed because one, though that has been um, directed by our district and our district has set those guidelines for us. So we'll follow, even though um, um, some restaurants are opening or some areas are opening, that doesn't allow us for us to continue. So this, this uh, fall and spring, everything is gonna be virtual, okay? So just for the quick of the, of the way that you submit club travel, um, you, we are still required to um, travel, um, ask for the travel, ask for the forms and submit it. Uh, for example, if a club is expected to attend a virtual conference, you do have to submit um, the conference request and it has to be approved by your direct supervisor, advisor's direct supervisor, and also it gets sent to our office and then we initiate the, the, the proper paperwork so we can uh, e uh, send it to administrative services. Administrative services creates a C, which is a, uh, the letter C, a C and a number. Um, and then this is where uh, administrative services tracks how they do the conference. Um, and then what was, uh, what was expense, how much did it cost? Uh, and then if there's any closings, for example. Um, that uh, last year we were supposed to go for a particular conference in um, Ontario, I, uh, I think I believe, and that conference was canceled. So even though I did receive the C, I had to notify administrative services that that conference was actually uh, canceled uh, because of COVID-19. Revisions of the uh, student handbook. Uh, we have uh, since 19, uh, uh, 2019 and 2020, um, club advisors cannot serve as a club ICC representative. Um, they are always going to be welcome to participate in the interclub council. I always welcome advisors to participate, but the but the interclub council is um, uh, the votes have to be by the representative. The votes have to be by the um, by the stu the student because it's a student clubs. Um, so, for example, in the ICC meetings, I'm the advisor for the Interclub Council, but um, I do not have a vote. Um, I don't vote. I don't. I don't uh, set quorum. A uh, set of quorum would be uh, Lord uh, with the chair, and also all the Interclub Council representatives that have been appro uh, uh, been approved up to date. For example, uh, clubs can also elect and appoint two representatives as a proxy to attend. Um, only club advisors and officers can make purchases on behalf of a club. So that's something that changes a lot, not a lot, but making sure that only the advisor and also the officers make purchases. The reason why is because um, it is very difficult to track any member or track any person that is outside or, or within the organization, but we do not know if there are students or there are not students, for example. So just keep in that. And then disbursement requests must be included um, with complete name. Um, I know people have, um, uh, some people change their names, um, but in class, in class web or in your CCC apply, you have your legal name. 
um, unfortunately, we do have to go with your legal name that is on your W number. So please uh, make sure you, you add that and you include that because once we receive it and it, it doesn't match your name with your W number, uh, we can proceed, we can verify, it goes back again. So we lose time on that, please. So please work with your advisors or also work with our office uh, to do that. Um, and this is a little bit of a change that now we're asking for electronic signatures, um, no longer the wet signatures. Uh, I know a lot of clubs have had difficulty with even uh, Adobe um, updating it, um, signing it. Um, so please work with Adra. Uh, uh, she's assisted other clubs that um, have run into that issue uh, as well. So supporting clubs in this era, you could say. Ways that we can improve, it, um, and this is an advice that I have for, for all of you, um, reach out. This is something, something new for everyone. This is something new that even for myself that I'm having, uh, that I have to deal with. I, it's, it's very difficult to sometimes be on track of meetings. It's very difficult to, um, to be creative. Sometimes we want to do things, but we're prohibited. But making sure that we, there's other ways that we can improve other ways that you could improve in your club. Uh, maybe this is a year that you improved in developing your website, for example, your section. This is, an, uh, this is a, a way that you improve your, even your mission statement, even your constitution, for example. And also the advice that I have is also plan ahead. Um, a lot of people want to do events, but they're not well planned. Um, a lot of clubs want to bring a speaker, but then it gets canceled. A lot of people want to um, have a social virtual event, for example, and then only three people show up. So planning ahead, that means that take more time to plan. I, and I will uh, use this example. Think of, think of a, an event as a wedding. An event you cannot have in the next, a wedding you cannot have in next week. You have to go making sure that you, you have all the guests, you're making sure you have all the decorations, making sure that you have um, people that are welcoming uh, people, you have make sure you have the DJ, making sure that you uh, have the person that's gonna do the vows, for example. Think of that as a planning ahead idea. So my suggestion is always plan a month ahead um, and also a, a range of time where you could speak with your advisor. Sometimes, for example, advisors, that's the reason why we have advisors is because the role is to advise you all and making sure that you all do the right thing, making sure that um, the meetings are for business, making sure that we don't um, either waste time or so advice. So I, I would suggest that sometimes advisors are, it could, it could be that we can be too strict to all of you, but knowing that we have to be in a mutual communication. And that goes with my other point is that communicate well with your officers and members. In this COVID-19, a lot of people have either has, we have developed either a, um, how to maneuver or how to multitask in, in uh, meetings. For example, yesterday I started at 11, or actually at 10, and I didn't have a lunch. I had a break and then I ended up at 7.30. So it's, it gets very overwhelming to be in front of a computer that is so small that sometimes I'm like, how do I manage and how do I do that? Sometimes our stress or our anxiety or to check in with your officers, check in with your advisor, see how you're doing and seeing how we can improve our office as, as clubs and also effectively communicate with your members. Um, sometimes officers would wish to add things or would like to create things, but sometimes the members don't like it or sometimes they have other ideas. How can you all communicate well amongst yourself? Um, those are kind of my, my tips and making sure that um, uh, if you're interested in doing a particular kind of like either a branding or a video or a flyer, um, you could always uh, reach out to us, reach out to Lord. We can always provide you with ideas and the way that you could communicate and actually do so. Just general announcements. Um, the market is scheduled for Tuesday, October 20th from 12 to 3. Uh, I, I have been able to reach out or be, uh, clubs have been able to reach out to, to me. This is a perfect opportunity for you, for your club to actually meet in person. Um, this is gonna be like, you could say a, a bonding activity. Uh, we always do need help. Um, this is something that we have 
served since COVID. This is something that is close to our hearts to really support our community, support those that are, 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 are in need. And when I say those in need, that means everyone. For example, sometimes I take advantage of the market. If I can limit myself going to the store because I know that there's fresh apples, sometimes we distribute apples or we distribute, uh, distribute um, pr uh, produce, that's something that I'm, I'm less risking it. So that's an opportunity for all of you to take advantage, not to say that all, all, for all those that are, are, are disproportionately impacted by economy. No, it's for everyone. Um, so we, serve, we don't ask any questions. We don't ask any particular uh, income questions or how many people. It's, it's one bag um, uh, canned foods or any food that we give. We and open their trunk, put in the trunk, and then they, they go. It's a quick, um, easy way. So if you're interested, if your club is interested in volunteering, uh, please reach out or we'll also add um, the link into our, our chat, a uh, way that you could actually RSVP. Um, so if your club or if your club is interested and also is interested to, to participate, please uh, reach out to us. We are having a virtual club, uh, club fair and we'll have Lord talk a little bit about it. Sorry, there was a, a chat, um, a response in the chat I was responding to. But. So on November 11th and the 12th, so Wednesday and Thursday, I believe, uh, on November from 11 to 3, here I'll just share my screen real quick. Do I have permission, Jose? Uh, to uh, share my screen. Adria, can you grant permission to Lord? All right. I believe I already did, but I'll check again. No, I do. I do. So give me one second. Let me see. I've never shared my screen before. Hold on. I apologize for my audio quality. I don't know. It's just, there's something going on with my computer. So anyways, so we have the virtual club fair, which will be taking place on November 11th and the 12th of uh, 2020. The, it's not a solidified time, but it's just a time preference uh, that you guys can look at. So we, uh, the plan is to have it at 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, we'll further discuss it in the next ICC meeting. Uh, to get your guys' preferences on times, if that's okay with you, if there's something that you need, or uh, if the time isn't really applicable towards your schedule, we could further discuss that in the next ICC meeting. So regarding um, this uh, club fair, this is the way that we're gonna do it, um, is that Student Life and the Intercollegiate Council, I will initiate the first, um, uh, I will initiate the first um, session, so with the first start, right? That includes, so we can have participation from the members. We can have um, people from the public, for example, or any other students that are interested. So then we'll, we will ask if any club that is interested, we will ask either the advisor or the president to set up a Zoom, um, a Zoom conference ID with also the passcode. Um, and then, so our flyer would include the first session, which is going to be introduction by student life and interclub council. And then we'll have the rest of the list of all the clubs that are interested in having a, um, uh, uh, you could say, a, 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 a section. So I can log off and then if I'm interested in going to the art and design club, for example, I'm going to go in, click on it and then also uh, sign in. So each club is going to be designed to develop their own um, their own sessions. So um, uh, we'll develop more instructions for for you all, but that's an opportunity for you to um, recruit more members. Um, maybe a club, or maybe there's a, another club that is interested to learn another club. For example, that will give you an opportunity for um, you to learn more. And then. Um, so those that will be hosting and co-hosting it, making sure that either it's your advisor or the president, and you either one, develop an activity, my, that will be my suggestion, uh, an icebreaker, uh, interactive, and then also go over the idea of what, um, what you do as your organization, maybe some um, uh, your mission, your values, um, uh, uh, what is um, some things that you're working on too, uh, and then also uh, why, Kind of like the sell, sell the brand again. 
why are you in that club? Why are you um, interested in joining that club, for example? So that could be a, a somewhat of a model that you're, you're more than welcome to use um, when, you, when we do breakout sessions. So first is intro by Student Life and ICC, and then we'll have the breakout sessions, uh, and then we'll definitely coordinate that with um, all the clubs that are interested in participating um, for both dates. So we'll have two dates available. And if, if a club is not available to meet, to attend a virtual club on that day, for example, it's a, a Tuesday or Wednesday, um, then on the next day, we won't include you on the, uh, kind of like on the, on the roster and availability of, the, of um, uh, your presentation. So that's an opportunity. Okay, now let me go again. So again, uh, please mark your calendars. Um, and also, uh, it'd be great to have you all participate at the market. Okay. Now, this is where I'm going to um, ask Adria for assistance on um, reviewing or, or going over the questions that were asked. Or Lord, if you could also help me with that. All right, so Scott said, can we still accept donations, donations of funds as fundraiser? So as of now, all fundraisers are, will be um, um, uh, prohibited. Um, so I know that uh, that has been um, a pass for um, um, your club, for example, Scott. Um, but if you are, if we are interested, uh, it will be great if we can have a meeting that you're included and other advisors that are included to meet with uh, administrative services to see if they can also provide an alternative solution because it has been a, a past common practice for clubs to do it. And um, again, I'm, I'm definitely in support of um, clubs fundraising, um, but I also have to, we also have to uh, as an office, we also have to respect um, uh, their rules and procedures um, by administrative service uh, and see if they can find a, a better solution for uh, clubs that have fundraised in the past. It could be that we use um, possibly the foundation as an example um, uh, to deposit funds, but that's it's going to be more of a discussion that we have to have um, across across the room. All right, next question. So it is a for uh, public funds, so we cannot give a gift card. Um, uh, either of you, uh, the club makes a decision to pay them. If, if, if the gift card is $10, for example, for every time that they, 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 that they come, um, the, the recommendation is that however many sessions they come, that either the speaker creates an invoice and creates the dates and times that they come and speak and the amount. So if, it, if, if the club is agreeing to pay $10, then it's $10 per session. And then a check will be issued to um, that speaker uh, in the amount of, it could be $10 at the end of the day, but it has to first uh, be, uh, it cannot be a gift, uh, a gift card. Alexa, I'm uh, answering your question regarding gift cards, the $10 gift card. So that will not be allowed. <laughs> Thank you, Alexa. All right. Now, another question. Okay, so in lieu of refreshments at meetings, can we give all members $10 uh, gift card to restaurants? We can't. Uh, it's a direct, um, uh, it's a public funds. So the difficult part that comes in, <coughs> oh, excuse me, sorry. So we can't because um, we are not allowed to purchase any, uh, any gift cards. Um, other departments on, on, on campus um, do issue gift cards, but we can't. Like for example, we can't issue um, a gift card from, um, uh, I know the library, for example, does cards like that. We can't do that. Um, 
So that will not be uh, that will not be allowed. And uh, another reason, one of the other main reasons why we can't is because you're really telling the student to um, have that card or gift card and go to the store. So now you're encouraging people to get exposed. So we want to limit that and the, that restriction. So um, if worst case scenario, that person ever goes outside their home and um, we're asking them to participate or asking them to go to the store, but something happens, are we liable? So it's always a liability issue for, for any given time. Um, we have AGS, can we do the CS County fundraiser online? So as of now, uh, uh, it's, uh, we will not be allowed to have any uh, fundraisers. I know that that was a phenomenal idea. Um, so I know, I think it was, um, yes, yeah, so for now, no, no online uh, fundraising. Okay. So when you purchase things online, um, when you submit either or you use your um, or your advisor or uses the credit card, for example, um, it has an itemized um, uh, itemized receipt of and, and it tells you how much you owe and how much you paid. Uh, if that vendor does not provide it, um, you either have to contact customer service and making sure that they send you a copy of the um, invoice, uh, copy of the invoice or a copy of the receipt. So that will be my suggestion. Um, and sometimes um, in packaging, they do have it. Or sometimes in the packaging, it has, it has, they have, it's different invoices for different items. So uh, make sure you um, uh, consolidate all of the items into one. Um, but again, all the items have to be uh, have to be sent to Las Positas, um, and you have to arrange with the advisor to to. I, I'm 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 we're, we're hesitant at clubs ordering items. Um, some club advisors do not want to go to campus. Uh, so we, we, let's not add that stress to the advisor. Um, and, and so let's figure out a solution for that one. Can I add something to, the, to that? The, the question actually was in regards to receipts when you order items online. Um, I think there might have been a misunderstanding in regards to what the administrative services is asking for. When packages come in, there is a like an invoice in the package. But when you're ordering online, um, special, especially like um, Amazon, you could print your invoice from from your order form right there, so that you already have your quote unquote re receipt. You don't have to wait until you receive your box to get your packing label with with your uh, receipt in there. So um, be a little proactive, I'm sorry to say that, but um, sometimes, especially now during COVID, it takes quite a long time to get, the, to get the packages. And also because now they're being sent to the campus and you have to wait until someone goes to the campus to pick up the box, you're well past that 10 day window, that 10 business day window of doing your paperwork. Um, so be proactive in, in going online and finding vendors that are gonna give you written invoices online uh, or written receipts for what you purchase, okay? I hope that answered um, your question, Alexa. Uh, and you, can you elaborate a little bit on the sponsorship? Repeat the question out loud, uh, Josue, so people know what you're referring to. So uh, it says, okay, so can, uh, can we do paid sponsorship? What paperwork do we need to accept a check from this? Can we accept donations? Any paperwork to submit to process a donation to a club as well? Okay, so 
you know, uh, we're going to have uh, administrative service joining us. Let me uh, put the link. Uh, let me just give me a pause for a second so we can answer that question too with administrative services. So give me a second. Okay, so let's, let's pause on that question and then um, All right, next question. Uh, do you consider ICC representative proxy to be a club officer or member. Um, so if 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 the club has assigned a ICC representative, then that's the representative for, so for example, the president can be the ICC representative, that's an allowed. Um, and the reason why we have a representative, that means that a, you're representing the organization at the end of the day. Uh, and uh, a proxy would be a person that either could be a member, could be another officer, that um, they are um, allowed to participate in the council and approved by the organization, but also is approved by the by student life office to say to initiate any particular votes. So that's that's do you consider ICC representative proxy to be a club officer or a member? Can I elaborate? I think the question may have also referred to purchases and I, I wanted to add that I I would prefer only the um, and I shouldn't say I prefer it's listed in the student club handbook. Um, that we are having advisors and officers, the four assigning officers, the president, vice president, treasurer, and uh, ICC representative. Um, those should be the only five people representing the club to make purchases. Uh, if we start sending proxies or club members, um, paperwork becomes very cumbersome because if there's an error in the paperwork uh, or we have a question, we now have to try and locate who submitted paperwork. Um, so we want to limit who's who's doing the purchases. I hope that answered your question a little bit um, better is to number one, the, no, we, we can't consider that and why we don't we don't consider other people to purchase. Thank you. Sorry, I don't mean to, that, that was my question, and I, I put it in the chat, but um, I, it, it actually had nothing to do with purchases. Um, my, my question was more that there's a list of, of requirements for someone to be a member, and if, and, and they're not, and they're different than the list of requirements for someone to be an officer, like an officer has to have a different, like, um, G, GPA and, and some other different things that a member doesn't have to do, so I wanted to know if somebody was interested in being an ICC representative proxy, but didn't necessarily meet the requirements to be an officer, are they no longer eligible to do that? It, it didn't have anything to do with purchasing. Uh, I, I don't know if Josue froze. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting sorry. for you to answer the question. Okay. I, <laughs> all I, right. I'm doing eligibility checks on ICC proxies because they are voting members on behalf of the club. Um, so I am doing, that's why we ask that you assign specific um, proxies so that I can do the eligibility checks to make sure that they're eligible. Yes, the 2.0 or above cumulative GPA. And of course, for any member, um, the GPA doesn't matter for members, only for officers, including the proxies. Um, but everybody that's in a club that's considered an active member has to be a student of the club. They could be a guest um, if they're, but they cannot participate as an active member unless they are a student. Hopefully that answered your questions. That was perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, I am now going, is Thomas? By any chance in the room? Yes, I'm here. You guys can hear me. Okay. There's a question. Um, I know um, 
we have talked about fundraisers and we have talked about um, that as of now until further notice, we are not allowed to have uh, fundraisers per Annette's um, uh, recommendations. That was the last time we had a meeting with her. Uh, and uh, there was a question regarding, um, are we allowed to, let me see, go back. Uh, can we do paid sponsorships? Uh, what paper do we need to accept a check from this? Can we accept donations? Any paperwork to submit to process a donation to our club as well? So um, uh, is that an allow, allowable transaction? Is that considered a, a fundraising? I mean, if it's a donation for the sake of a donation, that's fine. Those can still be turned in and, and we can still deposit that as revenue. In terms of paid sponsorships, is there like an example that somebody is thinking of that, that would function a little bit differently or any criteria that would be attached to this? So for, for the person that asked that question, is there a way that you could um, a little bit talk of, uh, use your, uh, elaborate a little bit of your example, please? Who was the person? Uh, another question was, uh, I'm gonna wait for that person. Um, so there is no way to use funds as contest prizes for a club contest. Thomas? Um, it depends on the prizes that you're talking about and we can't give like cash gifts to people. We can't use funds and say if somebody won some sort of prize, we can give them a gift card or, or something like that. Can't have a cash value like that. Um, but things like raffles, it's a little bit iffy, but if it's uh, a prize that's not specifically like monetary in value, then I believe it would be okay. Uh, but then we also run into the issue too of making sure that everyone has access to be able to win that prize. We can't like hide it behind like a paywall either. We need to be fair about it. So you just have to be careful about what kind of cash prizes that you guys are thinking of trying to offer for some sort of event. Anything that's related to money like that, if it's cash, it's a check, if it's a gift card or some sort of gift certificate to a place, that's, that's not going to fly. So that the answer is kind of no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just, it really just depends. If a, if a club has an idea of something that they would like to host and, and would like to provide some sort of prizes for that event, I would just, I mean, it would, it would be best for them to come up with a summary of what they're looking to do and then let's take a look at it. I don't wanna say a hard no without at least seeing a little bit more about what they're trying to do. If there's a way that it's fine, then we can see if we can go about it. Uh, it'd be better to see kind of like a proposal of what they wanna do and then let's just kind of confirm whether or not those prizes would be okay. I just wanna mention, um, Thomas, I've sent some some of the questions. Unfortunately, they may be repeated, um, but because they are pertaining to administrative services in regards to what's allowed, I've sent them over to you, and you may want to address them to the to the clubs while you're on. Yeah, I see them right here. Um, okay, so we'll I'll go back to the first one that we were talking about. Um, I won't go into too much detail about the paid sponsorships because I'd, I'd need to know a little bit more about what exactly that would entail because it kind of implies it's more than just a standard donation. But just the general question about whether or not you can still accept donations. Um, yes, it wouldn't be as a fundraiser. Fundraising is different. It's you guys hosting some sort of event. Somebody's paying for something um, and getting something in return. Usually, you know, you guys would normally just do food, um, which can't really do that right now in this climate. But yeah, you can still do donations and the donation part is pretty simple. It's for anyone can donate funds to your club and it would just be treated as a regular deposit of revenue. And we would do it how we've done before, which is um, that money, whether it's cash or check, um, needs to be sent to our office um, and let us know where we are putting the money. Every club that is set up um, has an ASB fund number where, the, where we track your money. So I just need the information of what it's for. You would just say it's for the business club, 
or it's for, um, I think it's called Christ on Campus, I can't remember, um, something like that, and, you, and uh, you'll let me know what it's for. It's, you know, $100, and it's just for a standard donation. Um, and once it comes our way, we will deposit it and report it onto your account. Right now, because we are uh, remote, we don't have standard business hours where you guys can pop in and drop the money off like you normally would. So we have backup options for that, which is primarily campus safety, um, especially if there's cash. If you guys somehow um, received cash from somebody who would like to donate to your club, or if you're the one donating, you want to donate to the club, um, it's best to bring that to campus safety because they're there 24 seven. And if you let them know what it's for and just put it in an envelope that's sealed, put a sticky note that says what it's for. This is the business club, $100 donation, and maybe put like a date. Um, if you put that in a sealed envelope, put on the outside like attention, business office deposit, something like that, bring it to campus safety and let them know what it is uh, for, that it's a, a cash or check deposit, and they can bring it to us because we don't want anything floating around and it needs to be handed off to somebody appropriate. So we don't want you to leave it in like a mailbox or leave it um, with Jaden Testy downstairs at the reception desk. Just give it to campus safety and they can bring it to our safe so that we make sure that we receive the money and it, it doesn't get lost. Um, anywhere. Um, and if there's issues or we need to work something out, we can always try and arrange for meeting times. But I just wanted to make that part clear too, because we've had it with, with other clubs as well. None of us are consistently in the office right now in admin services. So no, there's no popping in that we can kind of uh, arrange or orchestrate with you guys. Um, it needs to be done through campus safety. And if there's anything specific that we need to do, we would have to arrange a meeting time with like me or um, my coworker, Lisa, that also works in the office. Okay, hopefully that kind of made sense for um, uh, donations and deposits. If you guys still have those types of deposits, you can still do it. If you have dues, some of you, some of your clubs have dues that you have to pay to um, the club or to that eventually gets paid to an organization. Those types of things are still fine. Um, we can still receive the money for that um, and we can still deposit it appropriately. I think it's more so what Annette was saying before is the congregation of a fundraising event, that's obviously not something that can really happen in, in this environment. Other types of revenue that you guys wanna bring in is generally fine. Okay, um, let's see. Next one is the paid sponsorships. If they have, if the person who asked that question before, Ned, if he wants to email us later about that, that's perfectly fine and, and me or Sue can follow up with him um, on that one. Uh, let's see. Uh, Gift cards that you mentioned, a club that I'm in, as I see asked. So this is about, this is Alexa's question. Guest speakers that come in for meetings and somebody is offering them a gift card to say thank you. Something like that be considered within the guidelines? <clears throat> um, I don't believe so, no. However, what you do with your money, I can't control or advise on. If you're having somebody speak at a club event and you yourself went out somewhere and got a $10 gift card to that person to give it to them, that's your choice. But we can't do that as a compensation for a guest speaker through the college. So if you tried to get reimbursed for that, then we'd run into a problem. But again, I can't say you should and I can't say you shouldn't. Whatever you do with your money and give to that person, I would just ask that you make it clear that it's not specifically from the club, the, the vendor, the person that you asked to speak shouldn't be under the impression that this is something that we've offered when it's not. But what you wanna do with your expenses, entirely your choice. Through club funds, no. You can hire guest speakers to come for certain events. And we have a process for that. It is a lot, it is a lot longer and more arduous to do than um, just asking somebody to pop in for something. But we can hire guest speakers and we can pay them with ASB funds through the contract for service process, but that's entirely different. It takes um, longer to set up, it's, it, you can still do it. But even then we would be paying them with actual ASB funds by cutting a check to reimburse them. It would not be a gift card. So if you still want to do that and the person is still asking for some sort of compensation for their time, then talk to us, talk to uh, Adrian Josue and we'll talk about the contract for service process where you actually hire what's, what we kind of call an independent contractor to perform a service which is being invited to the campus to provide some sort of knowledge or, or experience or whatever you want to orchestrate. So yeah, we can do something like that. It would just be a different route, but no, we would not, um, we wouldn't pay for a gift card to give to the person and we would not reimburse you for the cost of that gift card that you bought to give to them. Okay, uh, let's see. 
Uh, Leo for freshmen's at meetings, can we give all members a $10 gift card to a restaurant? Um, I don't believe so, no, either. We kind of stray away from gift cards because it's it just gets very messy and, and muddy. Um, if there are meetings and you guys wanted to cater, we can figure out ways to go about that. I know you guys don't have in-person meetings anymore um, where it would be easier to just order something out and bring it there, and then we would just have that person be reimbursed through ASB funds. Um, and in this environment, since you guys aren't meeting in, in, in person, we would kind of have to discuss and maybe leave it up to uh, Sue or Annette. Annette is the, I don't know if you guys introduced Annette yet, but Annette is the VP of Admin Services. Um, since catering in this environment where most people are at home, it's, it's, it's different, it's kind of uncharted territory, so we'd have to see about that. Generally speaking though, like when this is over and you guys are, are back on campus and, and having these meetings in person, um, I would say stray away from getting gift cards to people and say, go get your own food. It would be best to either just, either just cater it as one thing or we can consider maybe um, reimbursing people who got food for a meeting. But definitely I would stray away from the gift cards. It, it usually doesn't uh, work out well. Uh, let's see, is there, so Alexa's question, is there any, is there something else we can use as raffle prizes or similar? Can you elaborate what you mean by monetary value? So actual cash prizes, prizes checks have a clear monetary value. Um, and those I believe are things that we can offer in like a raffle and similar things would be gift cards, gift certificates. Um, I believe coupons are, are another thing that might be a fit, have to check on that one. But anything where it's not really some sort of item you're giving somebody, it's more of like some form of cash or money, we have to stray away from that. Um, raffle prizes, I mean, I haven't seen any recently, but raffle prizes would be more of like an item. It could be a gift basket. It can be, I don't know, something you got from Bed Bath & Beyond. It, 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 physical items, I believe, are okay. Um, it's just, it can't be something that, is more specifically a cash value item. So I would stick more towards actual prizes that you would get somewhere that, um, um, that you can get at like the store or something. And then uh, be mindful that I believe um, in the rules as well, in the FECMAT guidelines, it needs to be open to everyone. I don't believe that you can have it hidden behind like a paywall where people need to pay a lot of money just to be able to qualify to get uh, the item. You need to be kind of fair and open for everyone so that they have a, a, a chance of getting that item. Those are a little bit iffy. Hope that answered your question, but if not, uh, let me know. Uh, okay, I'm not sure if there's, is there any other questions that anyone had? There's it, it so Lord has a question. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Sorry. So going back to um, the paid sponsorships, I was actually talking to a student. So what they said to me was by a sponsorship, I meant that maybe a business would send a check to us in exchange for the club for prom promoting their business for X amount of time or X amount of time. Mm, promoting in what way is this? Is, is there like an agreement that there's something that the club would do in terms of promoting within the campus? Is, are they expecting you to make some sort of materials? promoting their business? Um, um, so, hi, I'm the person that actually asked this question. So mm -hmm. I was just like trying to just give a scenario. So maybe um, like the business asks that we like men, like we hand out flyers to the members, ask them to like spread it out to like anyone that they know, just something like basic like that. That's all that I meant by that. Okay, yeah. Um... For the most part, I think that would be fine. Um, kind of depends on how it's phrased and look at. If they wanted to say, hey, you know, we'll, we'll donate $100 to your club if you wouldn't mind taking these flyers and pass them around to students, you know. Um, I don't think that would be too big of a deal, especially because um, um, businesses can promote themselves on campus. I don't know if a lot of you guys know, if you recall, like, you know, we'd have like the public board and, um, um, the cafeteria where they can promote some materials. Um, like officially distributing materials around campus, that's a little bit different because that has to get approved through the um, one of the VP's offices. Right. However, if it's just flyers that you're handing out to fellow students, 
most likely would be fine. It just kind of depends on how you go about it. If they're not really asking for any like specific things where they want you to hold, I don't know, any sort of event or make some sort of materials from it in their club, it probably wouldn't be too much of a big deal. I would just kind of look at it more as, hey, you know, they're going to offer you $100 free club as just a standard donation. We would deposit it as a donation and nothing more. And if they wanted to provide you some materials that you wanted to share with other people in the club or other students that you're in, in classes with, that would most likely be fine. But I would kind of leave it very simple like that, mm -hmm. nothing too specific where we're, we're really taking on like this marketing role for them. If it's okay. simple like that, I think for the most part, it would be fine. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Was there anyone else with any questions? If I, no other questions? All right, so I think we are, off. Uh, Adra, I know you wanted to share something. I do, please. I want to let everyone know that I have been updating our web page as quickly as possible um, as information becomes available to me. And I do apologize if anything, if you see any errors, please do reach out to me via email so that I can review that information and make corrections as needed. Um, we do have specific pages that go directly to our, um, to our agendas and minutes. And if I can share the screen, bear with me here, um, there's some certain things I want to uh, show you. I'll be as quick as possible because I know we're getting close to the end of our day here. Um, there's the student life web page. And on that web page, let's see if I can find it. There we go. Thank you everyone for your patience. Here on our student life web page, you're going to see as you scroll down, there's different tiles, one for student government, student clubs, and ICC. And they're all kind of have tabs that interchange to one another. Um, as you can see here, this shows you our current list of active clubs, our handbook, our forms. Um, this is a list here of all the clubs who have applied, but they're not all of them are active. And I'm sorry, the webmaster needs to work on this little margin here. So I apologize. Um, these are people that are starting to activate but this is the official clubs page here, the ones that are active. You're gonna see they have meeting times, dates. Uh, obviously everything is online. Um, advisors, names, and you can click on these and it sends you to emails. You can see the club constitutions, if they have connections to any national organizations, um, et cetera, you're gonna be able to click on that as well and get more information. Some clubs actually have websites. Um, if the advisor sends me the link, um, I can then post that. Um, I'm going to just do this really quickly so I could show you. Um, you click on it and then it takes you to that page. Um, right now, unfortunately, clubs do not have access to change this data. It has to be sent to me and then I do the best I can working with the webmaster to get your information out there. Um, so between that scene um, you, that we have agendas and minutes where you can, um, a web page where you could find our, <clears throat> our meeting information, including the Zooms, the agendas, the minutes from past meetings. Um, on our homepage, I'm gonna go very back to the, once again, student life home screen. So I did say we have the three tiles for our student government, student clubs, ICC. We have information regarding our market, which also gives you a link um, regarding our dates and times that we have our market. And if you wanna volunteer and also other resources, if um, you're in need and you can't wait until our next market, that page has information of different resources that we have available within our community. And down at the very bottom, um, I also have a calendar. And so for today as an example, if you click here on the club orientation, you're gonna get more information and the link is also here. So uh, I'm sorry if you find it a little cumbersome to go to different pages to find information, but hopefully I've got it in so many multiple places 
if you don't find it in one place, you'll find it in another. Um, so please be a little proactive. We'd like to send courtesy emails, but we don't always get information out to everybody. We may not have current email um, addresses. Up until this past week, we didn't even have an ICC chair. So welcome, Lord, congratulations on being elected. And this will help us tremendously in having an active um, ICC chair to represent us. So maybe we'll be able to contact everyone more clearly. Uh, but be a little proactive, please. And always contact me if you have questions or concerns. Thank you for your time. Great. So um, if there's any, um, what we do next is that uh, we hope that we can arrange a meeting with your officers that did not attend. Um, I know that this was also a lot. So I just imagine you repeating everything that we said to your officers. That will probably be in a stressful situation. Um, so one of the things that I uh, know that um, everything that is um, uh, recorded, um, we have to be closed captioned. So I think we have to figure out, um, we're, you know, we're working with the technology and we're working out the way that we can actually do that, but know that this is the reason why we're asking all clubs and officers to participate in training um, with us. So we just be an, um, in, a, in kind of in the same boat and understanding. Sometimes questions are, don't get asked uh, up until now. Um, and you start thinking about different scenarios, different situations. So th this is, this is the reason why we have um, this particular forum that we do. Uh, if there's any changes to your officers, if there's any uh, person that decides to leave, or, um, or, if, or even if you have any particular problems within your organization, please reach out to um, our office. We'll, we'll definitely uh, wanna support and continue to support all of you to become successful. And more than anything, know that you're a student first and um, uh, always uh, reach out for help or reach out uh, for your advisor, anyone that you're in, in your network, knowing that we, um, we appreciate your leadership. This may be the first time that you're running for an office or it's the first time you become a president of a club, but know that we're very, very proud. This is, will be a, a phenomenal opportunity for you to continue to use your, uh, those particular skills um, across the board. So. Uh, and I also um, want to definitely do a big thanks to uh, the amazing ad advisors that have uh, shown determination, sh shown commitment. Uh, it's, it's, it's really uh, an amazing opportunity where I don't have to do much of the work, but it's really the advisors. And that's, that's uh, a great way that I can, I can work with. I can always communicate um, and know that, you know, I, I know that you all are doing, uh, aside from classes or aside from the lectures that you do, you're also an advisor. That's, that's beyond amazing. So thank you. And also thank um, also the um, Saba and Lord and also Thomas uh, for answering our questions. And if there's any other questions, we can, I can, I will adjourn the meeting. Um, I will stay a little bit um, so you could start logging off if you're, if you're interested. If you want to ask a direct question to me, I will, I will stay a little bit, you know, and you're not required to, to continue, but um, th that this will be the end of our presentation. So thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thomas. Go ahead, Lord. Thank you. So we had a, a question in the chat so from Alexa. Um, so the question is, would you permit us to use a person's, or would you permit us to use a person's name after their legal name so that we may be respectful of everyone as well as being official, for example, on club minutes or anything similar? I know Angel wants to speak. Oh, sorry. I... No, I actually, um, I w I'm glad that Thomas is still here. Thomas, my concern, and I, I completely understand Alexa's question. Um, many people, you know, um, go by nicknames or um, what they prefer not their use of legal name. But what happens when, as an example, they want to do a disbursement, they use their W number and it's not mass matching what the name is on the, the actual paperwork. What is your preference for administrative services on that? So it's two things. Number one, and my main concern is being respectful to the student. Um, and I, I worked in admissions and records as well. So I have experience on that side of, of things of this nature as well. So 
primarily I want to be respectful of the student. That's the thing I care about most. The only part where we would have a workaround or some sort of solution is in terms of cutting the check and just the bank guidelines. So as long as is that if that person is filling out a disbursement request and they're mindful of the fact that I just need to know who I'm cutting the check out to and that they can deposit it, that's fine. It's not a big deal to me what the name is that's displayed on there. However they prefer it is fine. I just don't want to cut a check to a student with the name typed out on the check that they aren't able to deposit at the bank, if that makes sense. So if, that's a, if they're able to do that, that's perfectly fine. We can go that route. Um, otherwise, in most references, it's fine if the person uses their preferred name, even if it does not match what may or may not be in our student system. Especially if the last names are similar, I can usually kind of assume that that might be the case if the person is willing to add some sort of maybe just comment about why I'm going to see a discrepancy. Because um, I won't I want know every student and what every student's circumstance is. And my one, my one part of my job will be, I just want to make sure that I'm cutting the check to the right person. Um, so if they're comfortable making just a comment, that the name will appear differently from the system. That's perfectly fine. I just want to be mindful of the fact that I want to be able to reimburse you by cutting you a check that you can actually use and, and won't be refuted or, or, or refused somewhere. And then we'll have to um, work something else out. Because I can't disperse cash. I can't go out and get cash and reimburse a person that way. It's always going to be um, cut by a check. That being said, and um, I can only say this partially because I no longer work in admissions and records, but at the time that I was there, which was about a year ago, um, they were allowing students to update their name in the system with their preferred name, regardless of whether or not it is their current legal name. So if the student is um, comfortable and willing to uh, update their name in the system as well, to my knowledge, and I say that with a grain of salt, because I don't know if anything has changed in the last year, they should be able to go to admissions and have their name updated in the system to what their preferred name is. And then it would match. And I'm bringing that up because then it would match with what I would see on the disbursement request and then what I would see in our system. So just to be mindful of that, if that's an option that a student wants to take, I believe they still can. I haven't heard um, that that has changed and I don't believe that it would. And then there, I wouldn't even see a discrepancy on my end when we get a uh, dispersion request to reimburse the student because it would already be updated in the system and it would match with what the student puts on the disbursement request. Does that answer your question? Or does anyone have any other questions about that? That definitely answers my question. Thank you very much. No problem. You're on mute, Josue. Oh, sorry. Uh, any other questions you have for uh, for Adria, Thomas, or even Lord that we can ask, answer? If not, all right. So I will be ending this uh, meeting. Thank you all. I hope you have a great weekend.